And on the day of the Optus crisis, we are back on Aussie Verse, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us. Although this probably will be on a show, not on the day of the Optus crisis, but it will go down as a day that everyone was very, very annoyed, but then happy because they came back here and watched this new video. <laughs> I am Omnibo, joined by Sharif, and today for the first time, we have Anthony Christo showing off his artwork and latest Kickstarter. How are you, boys? Very good. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. Thank you. Absolute pleasure, mate. Absolute pleasure. We have changed the Instagram handle because we are redoing things at Aussieverse soon. There is a new logo coming, new intro, new banners and all that sort of jazz. So the TikTok, the Instagram, the Facebook all says Aussieverse. So if you do want to hit us up, go for underscore Aussieverse on Instagram. You can also find our graphic designer there, A51 underscore designs. And as always, we are so proudly sponsored by Comex. Let's, that is enough of the plugin. Let's get down to the loving. Anthony. Let's yeah. put you on the big screen. Hey, who are, are you? Why are you? What are you? <laughs> Go for it. Dude. <laughs> Why are you? Uh, that's a question I still contemplate every day. Why am I doing this? But you know, <laughs> um, so I'm. My name's Anthony Christu. I'm actually a comic book writer and illustrator. I do it all. Um, I'm also a sculptor and game designer, so I'm a very creative soul. I kind of was born with creativity. I actually was a professional dancer at the age of 15 to 17, so Hugh Jackman, but the Greek version maybe. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh, 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 Greek, Hugh Greekman, we'll call myself. But um, <laughs> basically, um, uh, you know, I've, I've always dabbled in creativity and music as well. I had a rock band, got into the 90s, silver chair, oh, that yeah. style of grunge stuff. So, but... Art has always been the kind of focus of my life and the thing where I know that I can kind of control, you know, it's something that I know that, you know, I don't have to have to rely on too many people. I can do the comics myself. But however, I am saying, talking about myself, I've just got an anthology, two new anthologies. And we've worked with, I've worked with 12 creators across Australia, America, Asia, a whole range of places. And I've been doing comics and art uh, full time, uh, whew, probably since 2010. So 13 years full time. I've uh, worked for a range of studios. I've worked with Disney on their video games back in 2013. I was one of the concept artists on Path of Exile. Uh, won multiple awards with Nomen Workshop, which is the school run by Alex Alvarez. My, uh, who the, the judges of the contest are usually Rick Baker, Monster Maker, the guy that did the Monsters for Aliens and that. So I've done a range of stuff, um, and uh, I've got my own comic book series called Luminous Ages, which is, which is, I'll add, is a G-rated, family-friendly <laughs> comic. It is, but we've kind of taken a bit of a risk and done a bit of a naughty comic, but we, we've gone into horror and gone down that dark vibe for now, just for this Halloween, the Halloween that just passed. Um, but that's me, you know, I'm a full-time creative. This is all I do. I don't have any other job. Uh, don't have patience for another job. This is it. I've only got time for this, really. So, yeah. But, Fair uh, enough. Yeah. Well, I'm looking around your room there, and it looks like you've got some killer stuff. I'm jealous of that uh, Masters of the Universe in the yeah. background there, the Castle Grayskull. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that's a homage back to the 80s, back to my childhood. Now you know how old I am, roughly. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's... Some you know, like I grew up with He Man and you know the original Star Wars. Uh, also, a big fan of like the Labyrinth, Dark Crystal. That's kind yeah. of the vibe of, of the. I like the dark fantasy stuff. Uh, never ending story, you know, just the just the style and look of all that stuff. I really enjoyed that genre, the nineteen eighties fantasy, and even corny stuff like Flash Gordon. I've watched that recently. A mate recommended it to me, and I was like. Wow, how did I miss Flash Gordon, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. So, Isn't that always fun, though, when you come from such a pop culture background when it wasn't even really called pop culture back then? It was just movies that you liked and stuff that you were into. And you think you know it all because, you know, you grew up in the 80s and the 90s and whatnot. And then all of a sudden someone pulls something out that you should have known about and you didn't. And it's like, wow, this is just 
this is cool. Flash Gordon being one of them, like you said. Yep. So let's go on to your Kickstarter, hey, shall we? Do you want us to? I've got, I've got it ready and going. Do you want me to share the screen? It's yeah. Go for it, man. Go for it. Yeah. For awesome. Sure. And I'll let you take it away. Oh wow. So yeah, we're doing really well. We're almost like well, by the time we get we we uh you get this video goes live, it might be funded, never know, but we're only a thousand dollars away from hitting our goal of eight thousand dollars. Um oh, it's free so close. Yeah, yeah, so we just had a bit of a spike then, which is good. But there's three volumes of Asian mythology here. So we've got the first book is the Baize Book of Monsters. The second book, that's more of a G-rated. That is a dark fantasy, 90, 1980s. That does fit in with like Dark Crystal, that kind of vibe and genre. And it's very painterly. I, I painted a lot of the pages with a Polish artist as well and a Ameri- uh, Brazilian artist. We all worked together, but I'll, I did it, probably a majority of the comic as well. Um, volume two is the Huckle Tuckle. Uh, that's the new one. Uh, it's so the Bai Zhe is a special monster from Chinese mythology. It knew about all uh, known monsters in the known universe, supernatural creatures, and it was kind of like a protector against um, evil and pestilence and famines and evil monsters. And the Yellow Emperor of China first encountered it, and then in, later in Japan, um, a noble um, Shinto monk or priest, Shinto priest in Japan. He encountered it in one of the prefectures of in Japan in the Edo period, around about 1500. And, you know, it's all mythology, obviously. I mean, whether you want to believe that this thing is real or not, <laughs> but it's got the face of a human uh, lion, human and a lion with a goat's body uh, or a cow ox's body. And um, it actually warned uh, Japan of pestilence and famine coming. So I actually warned them of this big plague that was going to wipe out everyone. Um, and so it got them to create these magical scrolls to put of uh, of a painting of him with like the this special warding, and it defended the town from excuse me the plague. And so, but and then volume three, I've I went down towards Japan and Korea, and I've gone through done the nine tales. It is a very graphic horror. So there is blood and guts and boobs, unfortunately, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, it is a very R-rated horror, and I wanted to go down that route. It's not to, to um, you know, I've, I've done it actually to show, I suppose, um, the, the power that these female creatures had over men, and the, these evil kitsunes that actually corrupted men and kingdoms. And also, if you mess with them, you know, you you are in great danger. So the stories I've written have actually are empowering. Um, you know, the art, you know, is not everyone's taste for the third book, but the second book is, has so many, it's got seven creators on board, um, and it has a whole range of, uh, fantasy and mythology. You can scroll down a bit further quick, just welcome to go faster. So there you go. So there's a new cover for volume one, which is going to be a foil mm-hmm. cover. That's the Baze and Book of Monsters. And, um, that's going to, that's being reprinted, remastered with, uh, it's been edited and it's, uh, a reprint and a new edition. So there's stuff that's come out of it. There's stuff we've added into a few different pages, just a few art pieces that we wanted to add in. And if you go down a bit more, that's some of the pages. Then we've got uh, one there, Volume 2, Huckle Tuckle. We can scroll down more, actually. Go down, we'll pass the, the naughty one. Go down a bit more, down, down, down. There we go. We've got coins and that. But the Huckle Tuckle, that's Volume 2. That's the new one. That's a 44-page comic anthology. Loads of creators. We've got American creators. We've got Australian creators. Uh, one of them is a, a girl called Dana King. She's a comic book creator in Adelaide. We've got Joseph Dewis. He's an American creator. Uh, we've got Lucas Sheffield, um, who's, uh, I believe, I probably got this wrong, I think he's. Well, he's from Adelaide originally, but I think he's from Melbourne or Sydney, one of those states. <laughs> so I actually bumped into him at a comic convention, and he wanted to be a part of this because of the whole his, – uh, his background is from the Philippines – He's done a story on the Capre, the Filipino monster. Um, and so I've, and then I'm doing the story on the Hakutaku. I'm opening it. It's all watercolor. Uh, it's going to be painted in watercolor. Um, I'm, that's just the cover, but I'm still working on the inside pages because I'm a fussy kind of artist. I like to make sure it's really at that level that I'm happy with for original art. 
Um, but yeah, seven amazing creators on there. Um, and then volume two has other creators as well. Uh, but this is this just shows you some of the pages on volume two. Uh, it is horror. It's more like, you know, it's probably creep show, you know, the old the TV show creep show or um, yeah. meets meets um, uh, uh, what's it? Big Trouble in Little China. China. Yeah, it meets Big Trouble <laughs> in Little China. So a bit of a combination of those two. I think the art's absolutely insane. I love the painted art look. I really do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah thank you. You'll see, actually, these are other people's pages. The inks, this is a cat and mouse story. So that that one there is on Jap the Japanese legend of the Bakeneko. So if you're into um, Japanese mythology, it's kind of like a modern take on it. It's like a they kind of done like a TV show, you know. Um, it's called Cat and Mouse, but it's about an evil cat. I don't want to spoil it because if I sit there and tell you all the story, no one will read it. But it, Sri Lankan just... wear leopard. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you scrolling down? Yeah, have a look down. I think you need to scroll down for the viewers. But yeah, that's the Bakaneko. And then, yeah, the next one is the Sri Lankan wear. That's Purr of the Void. So it's about a Sri Lankan wear, wear uh, leopard. Now, these stories were created by Joseph Dewis, who's an American creator who I've collaborated with before. I met him in 2018 when I went to America to network and I got invited to New York Comic Con because my first graphic novel did really well and New York Comic Con just invited me, gave me a free pass because it was the second highest funded graphic novel in Australia at the time. Um, and this is Dana King's story the, about the Jiang Shi. They're the hopping zombies, like, you know, the ones that have their hands out and you've got to put a note on their head to stop them. So they're oh, from China. Sure. Yeah. Chinese vampires, yeah. Yeah, the Chinese vampires. I should, it, some people call them zombies. Some people call them vampires. <laughs> that's that's as dark as it gets. There's a bit of violence or blood there, but it's, you know, it's in a cartoon way. South Park style, you know what I mean? <laughs> and this is the Hakutaku one. And th th like I said, I'm going to reveal more. Um, I don't know if you want to. You can scroll past all this. Like, I know the NSFW comic isn't for everyone. But like yep. I said, we've actually set one of the stories in Adelaide and it's about a migration story. It's about a student. She comes from China to Australia and to a homestay family at university, but the, the actual family are sexual predators and they try, the son actually tries to rape her. But what actually ends up happening is she ends up killing the son. Uh, she doesn't know she's a night owl fox. She basically transforms and destroy and, and eats him to death and there's blood everywhere. So like I said... There's like that positive message in it, <laughs> so it's not just all skip about past it. this. Yeah, just get, go down to volume one, and you'll be able to see what's in volume one as well. That more the painterly style <laughs> that myself and yeah. Dmitry Yukovsky did. And this is a one-off. I'm not doing that comic again like that. So that's that the volume three. That was just a. I I'm a bit of a risky creator. I'm very. Um, What's the word? I shouldn't say risky. I'm very um, sporadic. I like to try different things. Like we've done a graphic novel. We've done a con we've done an illustrated novel over COVID. I then did this comic anthology, but now I'm going back to the main series again. I'm going to volume two next year. So because I'm very creative, I like to try different things, and I've tried it. It's sure. it, it's done well, but I really think that my audience wants the G-rated stuff. So you can zoom in on here. That should all be safe now. So if you want to zoom in closer and have a look at the art, this is yeah. all the stuff that I've painted with Dmitry Yukovsky. <laughs> I don't know how to zoom on this, Mac. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, that's all right. I think if – are you in a browser at the moment? I think you just – Yeah, I am. Yeah, if you go to the top right corner, uh, depending on your browser, you should be able to go zoom. Like you go to the top right corner, there's three buttons down. There's like the three buttons in the top right corner and you should have zoom there. So that's up to you. Yeah, this is a Mac. I don't really use them that much. Uh, <laughs> Don't know what I'm doing with it. I'm sure. I'm sure. I thought it would be like command and scroll, like it is on the on yeah. the on the other one, but unfortunately not. No, that's all right. But you can get oh, it. Look at that. Idea. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So these are very detailed pages. This is more my style, and this is how most of my comics look. And even the first, I've even got the first volume of my graphic novel. So yeah. Well, we will have a link in the description as well. So people that do want to check this out for themselves, especially the parts that I have skipped past, fair and uh, go for it. Take a look because it does need yeah. more support here. But I just love the art. I think it's really great. Yeah. Thank you. That one there is a story by Rod Ramos Rodolfo. He did a short story as well. That's more in the American style of comics, you know. 
So he's worked mm. on things like D.I. Joe. He's done like a lot of Red Sonia. He's done some really big stuff. So um, he's been an artist on Rod Ramos Rodolfo is a Brazilian, Brazilian artist that I became friends with at New York Comic Con. And there's one of my pages here as well with oh, Stephen. SK. Yes, yes, yes. We've done a story together. He's actually the editor on all the books and the letter on all of them, even the naughty oh, ones. Cool. See? Even the naughty one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we love SK. We had him on the other day. Very great guy. Yeah. Uh, he's a lovely and, guy. Great to work with. So, And what surprised me with this Kickstarter as well, because I haven't been buying Kickstarters for too long. It's probably only been the last year or so. Um, yeah. and, and most of them are either single issues or there's a couple that I have bought that just still haven't come yet that are big collections. But what um, surprised me was all of this, all of these dice and stuff that you're yeah. also supplying here. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I'm actually, like I said, I'm a sculptor and an artist. I've, I, I dabble, I've done a lot of 3D modeling. Like I said, working in the video game industry, those skills have translated to this. And over COVID, I started, because we're playing a lot of D&D, &D, everyone was in lockdown, we're playing a lot of D &D, Dungeons and Dragons on Roll20. And um, I started sculpting dice and I developed four of those molds of mine. One of them is just a fact, the skull one is the one that my factory's allowing me to sell. It's just a generic mold. But I sculpted a goblin dice, I've done a wolf dice, I've done a caged dragon, I developed that, a spherical dragon, and we've also done evil eye or dragon eye dice. Um, this one here, these dice I'm doing, sorry, are actually special Halloween colours. So they're purple numbers, orange numbers, pumpkin colours, kind of like a bronze or copper. I do have some here. I, I, have, I, I love, love them. I really love yeah. the dice, i got to be honest with you. So if you are, that's the skull ones. So that gives you an idea of the skull one. Maybe it's upside down. Let's have a look there. So that's the skull one there. There you go. Whoa. So yeah, it's kind of zooming out. I'll, I'll grab some more because my studio is right here and it's kind of like a shop slash studio. I'll be one second. I'll get you more. All right. Yeah, I've got to be honest. I, I kind of want to grab some dice off you. I think they're really cool. Thanks, man. So they've all been sculpted by me and I've um, we've been test we've tested it with my... Um, I had a lot of D&D groups that I'm a part of, so it's not just me. Like, we actually, we roll them in the studio 5,000 times to check that they're balanced and that. And also, my cousin runs five D&D groups, one of them I'm a part of, and I've got one of the technical writers. We did do a Dungeons & Dragons module for the first volume of the Bize, and in that volume, um, there's a whole D&D book, and so we were testing dice there. But uh, this is the wolf one, to give you an idea. This is just this rare purple colour. You may reprint that colour again, but you can see the purple there. Yeah. So Howling Wolf. Uh, this is the Goblin. You can get the Goblins as well. This is These are Cage Goblins. Uh, the reason why I came up with a Goblin is it's a funny story. A lot of people go, were saying to me at comic, like at comic conventions, I'm a Dice Goblin, I'm a Dice Goblin. It's probably, it's not getting focused there, but there is a Goblin there. It's a better image on the actual Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. So that it's sorry, I'm probably not very good at doing this, but it's 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 focusing on me instead of this. So maybe I'll just get out of the way. <laughs> there you go. Oh, it's you go. Me. I'm the problem. See, there you go. And if yeah. you can see that, I'll get right out of the way. So. Yeah, they, these are all so cool. Like I don't even I don't even have reason to have dice, but every time I see cool dice at Comic Cons, I've got to admit I, I tend to buy one or two here and there, and I just have yeah. them on display. I think they're great. Yeah. So the the benefit of mine is I'm actually the sculptor. I'm the artist. I'm a lot of the factories that do import dice, um, they're not. They do import them from overseas, um, but they're not actually. They may design some of it, but they're not the actual artists of them. They don't maybe don't own the mold. Whereas I'm actually creating these from scratch and drawing them, I'm developing them, and I actually give a certificate of authenticity with every set of dice, which I don't think I have here. Maybe it's gone. I've run out of them because we just had Supernova in Adelaide. But I normally give you a certificate of authenticity from my dice, and you get a signed, you know. Yep. Sorry, I was trying to work out how to zoom in. I was just asking my partner on the computer, so I <laughs> muted myself. <laughs> now you're all right, mate. Uh, and that's the dragon eye. It's got a gemstone in there. I've got to get my face out of the way again. Stupid webcam. I've got to invest in a brand new camera. Maybe you guys can help me on ideas on cameras. But there is an eye there. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. So it's got a gemstone in there. And these have all been balanced and uh, quality assurance tested by multiple people. Um and, yeah, so they're available. And these rare Halloween colours are going to be ultra rare. Whatever we print, we're only doing so many, you know. So it's very rare. Let's go back. 
and have a look because yeah. I wanted to take it off while you were showing that. That's right, mate. Yeah, so there you go. Um, again, take a look at the link and zoom in for yourself on the screen so you can have a look. Um, but that dragon eye, the wolf number one, and that goblin, mate, they're all beautiful. Thank um, you. And then you've got different ones down here too. Yep. The skulls and there's, yep. That's the goblin there. The, the That's like the pumpkin goblin, I call it. Orange numbers with a couple. With an antique gold look, you know. Yeah. Well, being such a Spider-Man fan, I'm partial to goblins. <laughs> but you're not a real dice goblin unless you have the dice goblin, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the pun I use. Okay. So. These dice could, could just be the the sole reason why anyone would just support the Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. So are these available for purchase as well? Uh, as well only on are Kickstarter. These colors are only on Kickstarter. So I do have my other, I do have other dice and certain stock, but I have to order, you know, a few hundred and then the, and they go, usually big shows they go. Um, and I, I can't stock every color all the time. You know what I mean? Like it's just, yeah, it's very yeah. hard. So if you did want to pins. Yeah, we've got some nine tail fox pins or three tail fox. And they've got glow in the dark ones. We've got glitter ones coming. They're all new, the glow in the dark ones. And then you've even got coins. Yeah. Yeah, they're Halloween edition coins with a howling at the moon. That's a brand new design that just come out. Like so cool. coin. Yeah. And then we've got the Dragnari coin, which is our standard currency for our world, our realm. So, wow. All right. Then we'll skip past that one. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I promise you it won't happen again. You get me on the next one. I'm doing I'm doing volume <laughs> 2. We'll schedule for June next year or May. And um, you'll have you'll see an epic new volume two is going to be called Luminous Dragons. It's all about dragons. So we're, we're leading up to our main character going to get his baptism and basically unlock a dragon and release his powers and discover what you know what the evil is. That's some of my original paintings. Yes, so that's gorgeous. Thank you. So basically, we've already started work on on the next volume. I've already started writing the next volume. Yeah, we've already, I've written most of it. I'm just like editing it and I've started mm. about four pages of art. Um, we've already done volume two of the Hakutaku is done. You already saw it. I think I've sent you the PDF. It's just four pages. I'm, I've, I've done the watercolors. I'm just adding little shades in there and touching up those watercolor pages. Um, and volume three is mainly other creators and we're just hiring more artists to finish that up. The NSFW comic, because uh, I, I really can't be distracted by that, if you know what I mean. So, <laughs> so are these so, volumes available so in hardcover? Yeah. Mm. Um, they no, they're all soft cover at the moment. Hardcover is quite expensive to make. So, yeah, the, the only ones that are in hardcover are my first graphic novel, which I've got here, and my illustrated novel. Uh, I'll just grab them right now. Actually, they've got the books right here. So we've got. Um, Volume one of, of the comic that's a hardcover, so that's volume hardcover one. right there. Volume oh. one comes plastic wrapped. Then we've got the illustrated novel, which has got 70 illustrations in it anyway, so it's got loads of art. It's kind of like a comic with art book, art pages in it, you know, lots of paintings in there, illustrations mm. for that, you know, so pretty much full feature art. So so there's a lot of text there, but we'll go to it. There you go. There's another painting. <laughs> so, yeah, um, cool. so those two are hard covers. The the Bize is a soft cover at the moment. Um, I I would like to make uh, this is the first volume, so you can get an idea of the, the quality of the art. So that's ready to go. We've already got that ready to print. Yeah, I dig that. Yeah. Mm. And where is that? More there. So that looks pretty cool. Look at that. That's the Chinese Minotaur. 
So oh he's, wow, okay. He's actually a Chinese Minotaur. They're like he's actually got four eyes and like silver horns. So, but um, Chi Yu was his name. Sorry, I, I had a mental blank there. So it's been a long night. So yeah, Chi Yu was the evil Minotaur of China. So yeah, it gives you an idea of the art style. Again, that's my style of art, more the painterly style. And um, but I am aiming, depending on how many followers we get, um, I would like to do volume two of the graphic novel as a hardcover. So um, I am considering it would be good to roll in. I'm even thinking of the first twenty. Did you have you had a chance to read the Bize yet? Yeah, I did. I really liked it. Yeah, so I'm actually thinking of putting those first twenty six pages into volume two somewhere just so people know as a catch up so people that have missed out on things they can they don't have to buy this book they at least get the first 26 yeah. pages fits in with the narrative of the rest of the graphic novels so it's, we might add that in as a bonus and go you know what we're going to make put those 26 pages with the other 48 pages that are painted so that way it's a bigger book and it and also yeah. gets the uh the anthology not the anthology stories but at least my pages that story of the horror stuff or the, you know, the dark fantasy stuff into it because it is part of the law and it makes more sense to do that as a hardcover so people can have it all in, start collecting them all in hardcovers, you know. Yeah. So, but we'll have soft covers, uh, soft covers available as well. But, you know, we are, as soon as I've got that project active, um, once this is finished, we can set it up properly. Um, I'll let you guys know and, and we've got a whole six months to market it. We're really um, pushing it. We've got a lot of ideas for it. Um, and, like, I'm just creating a lot of comic book pages and going to be sharing what I've done, you know, every so often on Facebook or social media, YouTube. Mm. I'm actually thinking of, well, not thinking, we are planning to turn my YouTube channel into more of a narrative channel, kind of like the wandering traveller of Equatorium. It's like a guy yeah. in a character. Me in a caravan and a mount, he's got a magical mount, maybe a, a cat dragon that kind of takes you to different cities of our world and, and you explore the story. And, and maybe at the end you see a, a painting of me painting the comic book panel for the day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or even if it's the panel, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to see the whole page, you know? Well, I was so. going to say, you suggested as well when we were talking about uh, this video that you were going to show us uh, you painting. So obviously we don't have time for that today, but I'd love to have you back on and we can you can actually show us how that process is done because um, I'm when it comes to art, drawing and all that sort of jazz, I am completely useless. And I obviously know how how putting pen to paper works and making a comic book, but when it comes to the painted style, I've yeah. got no idea how that's done, and I'd l I'd love to see that, and I'm sure other people would too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Look, you might get. I mean, I don't know how your schedule is, but I mean, I'm finishing off the vo the third and the second volume. If there might be one page where there's no, you know, it's 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 G rated. <laughs> so even if there's a page where it's just the, the 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 before the kind of action scenes, I can maybe show you a painting next week, a digital painting, if I've got that ready same time yeah. next week to do a live stream mm -hmm. next wednesday night or thursday or whatever so okay we end on i think we end on wednesday uh sorry thursday so there's about eight seven or eight days left um but yeah we're ending yeah in eight days so i think i'll just give you all the exact time because i've got to go into the back end to just check the closing time i think it might be like 11 p.m but i'm just looking now uh I should know that, shouldn't I? But uh, <laughs> like, uh, when you do a Kickstarter, trust me that all the days blur into one. You know what I mean, mate? So yeah, uh, Thursday. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Thursday, November sixteenth, um, eleven twenty-five p.m. So eleven o'clock at night, at Adelaide time, I believe. So mm. so be like your midnight. But um, you never know. Like if I, I'm gonna go on comics's podcast as well probably uh, on his youtube channel i'll probably do a live stream with him and then if you guys are free next thursday we will we'll, we'll, we won't double book you we'll work it out <laughs> so you know uh, but we'll I'm, all, I'm all keen for that that sounds good um 
personally, Thursday nights are great for me because I have Fridays off. So we'll see how Sharif feels and we'll go from there. Yeah, no, thank you for having me on. Any other questions or anything you want to ask me? Yeah, you know what? There was plenty, um, but we've run out of time. So I'd love to get you back on to actually yeah. interview you, if that's okay, instead of just showing the yeah. Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. All right, so I see another two shows coming. One, your interview, oh, wow. and two, and, and two a live stream of your art. Yeah, yeah, no worries, man. Thank you. How does that thank sound? You. That sounds cool to me, but thank Fantastic. you for having me on. Absolutely. Yep. Well, thank you for joining us today, tonight, wherever you are watching this. Go check out his Kickstarter. We will have all of his links and his socials in the description so you can go check out all of his stuff as usual. Please go follow Aussieverse on all of our socials too. Like, so, well, don't you have to like, subscribe is more important. We have a lot of viewers that aren't subscribed and we don't understand why. Just do it, man. And Sharif, as Aussieverse, what's the rule? Oh, it's always for life. And we are proudly sponsored by Comics. If you're not sure who they are, we will play this little video for you because they are the ones that bring Aussieverse to you. And if you want to know about Australian comic book creators, Australian comic book artists, anything to do in the world of comic books and Australia, go check out Comics because not only do they have all the information there about all the Kickstarters, all the comics that they sell themselves, but they also have all of the stores where you can buy all the comics in Australia. It's a real great place to be. Even if we weren't sponsored by them, I'd still be pimping them just like that. Also, last but definitely not least, they have one flat shipping rate, which you do not hear about very often at all. So pump up those bags and take advantage of that. And if that's not enough for you, this is the end. This show is sponsored by the Comics Shop. Check out comics.cx for all things comics and find out what comics is all about. We hope you enjoyed the show.